we hear the scripture, uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, so much, and recently we've just heard it repeatedly over and over and over. But it seems like we don't get it. It's become like that the go to scripture for everything, even though it's very true and it's very valid and it is the answer we are not applying it to our own individual lives we use that scripture if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven forgive sin and heal the land not verbatim but you know what it you know what it says but the problem is we use that scripture to point to other people instead of pointing to ourselves. All of us, are our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. All have sinned and come short of his glory. None of us do it perfectly. None of us can stand before the Lord and say, I did. But for the grace of God, we would all be lost. So this is a time of humbling as the church of Jesus Christ. We must humble ourselves and pray. We must turn from our own wicked ways. We have ways that we don't even understand. As we're, we have self-righteousness and there's pride. Anytime that we hear this scripture and it bothers us, that's pride. If it bothers us that someone says we need to humble ourselves, then we're prideful. If it bothers us when someone says that there's evil or wicked ways we have, then we have pride and there are wicked ways within us. So what we need to do is we need to follow the prescription. The scripture said before that said, if I shut the heavens and there's no rain, if I send pestilence among the land, if God, if these things are allowed and are, are seen in our land, then he gives us the prescription as the body of Christ. It's not the world's problem. It's our problem. We're the ones here sent to govern the earth on behalf of the kingdom of God. So we need to get on our posts and pray. Seek his face. Turn from our own idolatry. We've made idols of churches, buildings. We made idols of pastors and apostles, prophets, evangelists. We've made idols of people. We made idols of work and jobs and 401ks and cars and titles and positions. We've made idols. And it's time to put them down. Huh? It's time to get serious about this thing. Because I'm going to tell you what, it went from 14 days in the house to now there's 45 days. It's been extended till the end of April. And God can extend it even longer because our knees are not bowing. We're not taking it serious. We're still playing. Nobody, no one want to fast and pray, cry out and seek God. And we don't have to join together to do it because ha prayers are carried up by the spirit into the spirit realm. We don't have to be together to pray. Our prayers will ascend unto heaven and they will be captured there by the angels of the Lord into the center of God and become a sweet smelling savor to his nostrils. We will ascend into the heavens to pray. That's where we'll meet. We don't need to meet physically here because we need to meet in the realm of the spirit. We need to pray for the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. We need to pray for God to intervene, for him to have mercy on us and on our world. Adam was put in the garden and given authority in the garden, said, now look, this your, this your realm. You rule it. I've made you like me and I've given you the power and the permission to rule here, to have dominion. Everything is subject and subjugated to you. So what's the problem? Everything now, Jesus came, Jesus died and he gave us power and authority and dominion again. What the devil stole, he gave it back. So what we need to do is take it and use it. We need to repent. From not using, we've been so caught up in religion, good God almighty, huh? so caught up in get your blessing, touch your neighbor and all this foolishness, so caught up in people wanting to build their own kingdoms and not building the kingdom of God. Prophets have been warning us for years 
I know at least 10 years, I've been hearing the word come from different prophets saying that times were coming and they were going to be difficult. And, but we could intervene with prayer and fasting and stop the plague that was coming and stop the judgment that was coming. But we didn't listen as a nation. We didn't listen as the church. We say, oh, that's not our problem. That's the world problem. No, no, beloved. The, eco the economy of this country is going to be our problem. If it, if the bottom fall out, six trillion, four trillion, three trillion, two trillion dollars, where is it going to come from? It's going to cause our economy to implode. It's going to blow up on itself. We need to pray. We need to pray, beloved. Pray and not faint. You need to, if God wake you, whatever time it is, just pray. Pray for your nation. Don't pray for yourself. Don't be selfish. Pray for your nation. Pray for your leaders. Pray for those in authority. Pray for the church. Pray for, pray for other intercessors. Pray for people to get out of pride and get on their face. It's time to pray. God is calling us as a church to intercept. Intercession is interception. We can intercept the things that are coming. Everything has not been released yet. Just full judgment, we haven't seen yet. This is the opportunity, the time period when God is saying, I'm going to weigh you in the balance and see if you will be the church that I'm calling. I'm going to, I'm going to try you with fire and I'm going to see if you're going to come out. I'm going to see what you're going to do. Will we be the church? Will we answer the call to pray? Will we honor God? Will we recognize our own errors and repent from them? and begin to intercede and bombard, he bombard heaven on behalf of a people, on behalf of a nation, and on behalf of our world. Be blessed. Let's pray, not lose heart. God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, because we've been apathetic. We've pointed at everyone else, and we said everybody else is to blame, and it's not our fault. Huh? We're not responsible, God, but God, your word declares that you've given us authority and keys to the kingdom so that we can bind and loose. You've given us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. You said in your word huh, that we could go and that you would be with us always and that we were to make disciples of all nations uh, and we were to teach them all things that you have already taught us. And God, we've been so busy in the building uh, that we have forgotten about doing your commission. So Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Uh, we ask you to forgive us. You said that we should pray and not faint. We said, you said you, we should pray and not lose heart. Huh? You said we should pray for leaders and government and authority so that we could live peaceable and godly lives. Uh, and Father, we have failed to do it the way you've instructed us. So God, would you forgive us? And for those that have not gotten off the wall, for those that have been in their place, God, thank you for them. Would you strengthen them? Would you keep them? Would you bless them? Would you make us, Lord, and help us to be one with you, one in prayer, one in your mission, one in your word, huh? one in your spirit, God, so that you can get the glory out of this thing. We thank you because you're a glorious God. You're a creator God. You're a sustainer God. You're the merciful God. You're the loving God, the compassionate and forgiving God. You are also the God of judgment and you are also the God of wrath. So we thank you for being all things to us, God. We thank you that we are your children. Now, God, forgive us and restore us. Turn us. Turn us, oh God. Turn us, oh God. Turn us. Break off that stubborn pride. Break it off of us, Father, in the name of Jesus, so that you can get the glory out of your church that you deserve. We thank you. We praise you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Y'all be encouraged. Keep the faith. Get in your word. Get on your face. Get in prayer. Come on. We can pray and not faint. We can pray because God won't fail.